Hey guys, what's up? Smile! And I don't really feel like, you know, what's, what was beautiful about my last video thing is that I was, I was straight up baked, right? I was, I was talking on some joints. And I was just on one though, but 0.5, you know, 0.5 grams. It used to get me like fairly high. It's the point I had to smoke three, but that's back in the day. When I was a fiend, when I was a pot addict, when I made so many regrettable decisions, you know, because of pot. But there's one that's always set to mind that I'd rather not speak upon because it's kind of personal and private. But it really saddens me in retrospect. Um, it was a crime, let's just say that. But it didn't really hurt anyone, but it was a crime. I'll just leave it at that. I feel like taking a walk elsewhere. It's just the sounds of the cars are beautiful. They're entrancing at first, and then they turn out to be overly loud. Um, you know, I've been dealing with uh, the most cynical kind. I'm convinced more cynical and more um, obsessed than any of humanity could be. Mine is very few, the, the particularly demented ones, the psychopathic ones. It could be that bad, but uh, you know, I'm talking about schizophrenia, right? Then you're noticing how, I'm talking about schizo, then you're noticing how I'm kind of associating the voice conundrum to real aspects of personalities. And then you kind of ask yourself, like, why is that? Well, you know, if you watch any of my other videos, you'll see a few things, probably, maybe, but you don't need to, but a few things have been blatantly clear to me, and one of, that, one of them is that for the last two and a half years, I've been on an overblown, yet still... I guess, logically inclined, I guess, following the world row, I've been on a mission, I guess the best I'd put it would be within the confines and realm of the expectations of my life, because I believe that's kind of how our lives run, right? What if we're all just predicted? I've said that before. Even though unexpected things happen and we don't know about them. That's the point of them being unexpected. But maybe our minds are just not meant to know the truth. Maybe the lack of an expectation is what creates the beauty, really, in a way. Of the social happening. If you believe we're being watched at all, that there's a god in the sky or something. Or a vigilante or a, even a... This isn't nearly as common, but even a wicked, evil creature or just... You know, a hero. Then I want you to ask yourself... What does that really mean? I want you to think about it sometime. You know? What does it mean to believe in religion? What does it mean to believe in life after that? What does it mean anyways? You don't. See, you kind of notice through our preconceived minds how when the fabric of life is within or past dimension by a large margin, so meaning hundreds of years and so on, then we are more likely and prone to simply believe. You know, it's the amount of people that believe in the wine over water story, how Jesus either turned, I believe it's turned water into wine. I should really know that. Everyone knows that. So let's say that's what it is. Well, I believe that's what it is. 
Then, well, then again, I don't blame myself. I'll go into that after. Really, I don't blame myself for forgetting things. I'm kind of a beautiful mind for remembering as much as I do. But, uh, you know, the fact that, like, half of Christians that read that story, I'm sure two-thirds even, just believe it. They think, oh, it's a miracle. He really did terraform. He really did summon wine, Jesus. The fact that they believe it kind of strikes me as it's far from wrong, but if you think about the concept of today, it's far from right. Because how does it make sense to summon something? Yet we accept it because, well, it's in the Bible. What does it mean to be for something to be in the Bible? It's something we hold to a high prestige. Because, well, a lot of people are fanatics. And buildings everywhere across the globe have been built for the purpose of religion. For the purpose of prayers. For the purpose of learning about preachings and so on. So... The point, right, is that if you remove the prestige, if you remove the glossy cover and you just see things for what it is, even to a degree, the saying applies, if you stop judging the book by its cover and simply read the, the, the lines, the inside, I'm sure you'll find a great and amazing book and all that, but uh, I just wonder if without the societal context and without the mass grouping, if you'd see if you'd see it as a truth, or if you just see it as another fictional take upon what could be considered to be reality, but then society picks it up, and next thing you know, it's considered to be reality. And I went to church, right? I did. I remember standing up and hating it. I, I just stood still for like 20 minutes, man. And it sounds weird because I've done it many times since. I've been fine with it, but... At church, it bothered me. I've always wondered why, you know? There's no meaning to that, by the way. It's just the truth. But, uh... You know... Maybe it's a beautiful thing to have hope and to believe in all that. That I can't deny it. Maybe it's the most beautiful thing of all time. And maybe when we course correct or amends into our logical point of view, maybe we just create dissonance after all. Maybe it's simply meant to be that way is my point. Because it happened, right? So... There's a reason people started believing. And yes, I'm a believer in realities being manipulated and all that. But, uh, you know, actually I've got some wild thoughts on that. <coughs> but it doesn't change that a phenomenon is actually the most fascinating thing. Phenomenons are inherently fascinating. I really think they are. And, um... You know, a lot of people wouldn't buy into religion, and I don't blame them. I kind of don't, I'm mostly some an atheist, but there's parts of religion that I believe in a bit too much. And it mostly always lies around the superstitious. The superstitious aspects of religion I usually tend to believe in. I'm surprised at how much I believe. At least, like, I put together a concept or context, um, I consider the context and so on. Then I conceptually think it through. Then I agree. Or I just literally agree, really. Like, for example, like, I am not a believer in, you know, the Muslim side of things, but. I was at my friend Ahmed's house and he had six Quran quotes on his wall and all I could think the whole time was these are beautiful you know there was one in part it was very well written to me it seemed like eccentric 
um, you know, almost like, well, it was very different kind of writing, very peculiar, and that uh, it's very clever yet, it's almost like inconsistent, not jarring, which is what I expected though. And, uh, you know, the quotes were beautiful, but there's one that spoke to me. And one of the conceptualities that I quote was that you have to trust in the higher dimension. You have to trust in the God that you've seeked in order to get your rite of passage into the heaven that he proclaims and knows and sees. So, I thought that was really fascinating. And, um, you know, maybe the point behind religion is actually really beautiful. But maybe the fact that it started so much conflict because people believe in it too much. I believe that it's only normal to have a shade of doubt, to have some doubt upon anything, you even especially what you care for, you know. Too many things in my life change too quickly for me to not hold doubt upon things. And, um... You know, the truth is, is we're, I kind of believe that, sorry to change the subject, but that's normal for me, right? I'm quick with that. <laughs> so again, I don't deal with such a good memory. I kind of believe that we're living logical lives. I'm the soul one, I believe it's peeled into the illogical. But then again, there's so much wrong and just straight up odd and different about some parts of reality to civilized communities. And every community is technically civilized. I mean, you can't judge a whole community that way, but I really want you to think about it. Like, why are some countries more fortunate than others even though it makes sense because while the financial side of things speaks very loudly and boldly there but if you, you really think about it it's a bit odd considering how history you'd hope that history would have had so much of our back so much more you'd hope a more consistent upbringing would have taken shape Instead of a, an inconsistent clusterfuck for so much of the world. I mean, you know, we refer to the third world. That's actually a third of the world and it's poor as shit. And only the very rich and powerful or the militia or so on are the ones who make it. And you start to think, like, we don't refer particularly to ourselves as living through dystopian times. But are we kind of living through dystopian times after all? I mean... We're a very prosperous nation, Canada. I think we're a great place. But, you know, for every Canada, there's an Africa. For every Canada, there's... Well, China is complicated. But I'd say China. There's places that just let you speak your mind and be yourself. In that sense, I like the United States a bit more. You know, just because it doesn't fight against free speech through its law as much. Even I think the United States can be abrasive as an idea. I mean, they kind of think, you know, like, okay, fine, we're all allowed to think it. And you know what? It's a beautiful thought to think that your nation is the number one on earth. Fine, it's true. But they can, sometimes some fans of politics get a bit arrogant with it, you know. But it's true, it's a beautiful thing. 
And hell, if it's working out for you, it's working out for you. I mean, every place has opportunities. And, uh, yeah. I think you are really beautiful, if you ask me, for watching. So, I'm just going to go, I think. Um, thank you. <coughs> for what... <coughs> But for what it's worth, as the last statement, yeah, um, let's just say this. I believe I walk in abilities, you know, on my earth. Maybe watch the last video if this confuses you too much, but uh, I know you probably won't, but it's fine. You watch this one, you're a beautiful legend for it. I believe I beyond a walk in logicalities. I, be, I, I, I believe I made them take action against me you know if you think about it anyone can attain importance but i don't even see it as important in fact i wish that had never fucking happened to me but uh i believe that through our minds you have access to different fabrics of reality not just the physical state we're in we have access to the metaphysical for example which is an imagined physical state. And, uh, you kind of have like subconscious minds that think somewhat for yourselves, mostly for yourselves. But mostly just thinking the same way to just have a differentiating thought pattern and so on. I believe that there are computers that have been created, but they're not actually computers, right? But I see them as laptops, but they're not actually laptops. But they're created to constrict my memory. They're created to give me memory problems. And I believe there's a very good chance this applies to anyone with memory problems. They just don't see the laptop. They don't see the truth. I believe so much health, so many health issues, so much of our health conundrum is, you know, forced upon us. But yeah, that's all for another time, really, because I'm kind of getting home and I kind of don't want to talk anymore. But uh, yeah, thanks for being amazing. See a love, see a beautiful, see a amazing, see a kind stranger. And for what it's worth, Maybe we're all going to be balling someday, yo. I hope so. I hope so. Because I, I see us balling quite significantly. What do I mean by that? You know what? Revolutions bring about beautiful changes. Well, how about without the revolution? How about let's just let it happen? I think we're in for a bright future. I mean, it doesn't seem that way. You know? I know it's here. Yeah.